Hi everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus and today I'm bringing you the video lesson for the first edition of my Let's Explore V4 series. Um, I published blog post on January 2nd about the page setup panel and tab one and I'm just gonna go through that today with you so you can see exactly what I see in that on my screen and that you should see on yours as well. So I'm going to start here with a blank mat and I'm going to click in the top right corner is your page setup panel and you'll notice this pops up and I can move my panel freely around. This is called the flexible panel mode and with V4 this is a new addition and it is amazing. I love it. Uh, you, it, it works great if you are designing and have multiple tabs open and you do not need to then click back on the tabs. Um, I use the fill color a lot, so I will keep this panel open um, when I'm designing, and then I don't have to keep on clicking back here into the panel icon buttons. I can just keep it open, and it'll hide itself behind another one, and I just choose it. So once it's open, you will then see this little hand on top, and you can grab it and move it, and then once it's moved, it will stay where you drop it and stay in that location until you've closed it. Um, if yours is not giving you the option to grab it and move it, then you can change that in your paid preferences panel in the bottom right corner. And under defaults, you will want to change your panel mode to the flexible mode. And there's a couple other options, but I choose the flexible mode most, option, most often. And then click OK. And then you should get this little hand that shows up when you are in the top color panel of that, of that panel. And you can move it to wherever you'd like to on your design screen. So now we're just gonna talk about each portion of the page setup panel in this tab one. Uh, first you have your page size. And this is set right now to automatic Cameo. I had my Cameo one plugged in yesterday. So it recognizes either the last machine that was plugged in or the current machine that you have plugged in and turned on. So in this case, it was my Cameo One. You also have the option to set it to your current printer. Whichever printer you have plugged in to your computer is what it recognizes. And for instance, in my case, it ha I have a standard letter size printer. And you'll see that it then changes my page size to my printer size. And you'll see here in a minute how that can make a difference in your when we go get further down. So it's changed it to eight and a half by 11. Here I can change the orientation either to be portrait or landscape, depending on how I want to design it. And you can also change it to custom, um, or there's, there's many other options here as well. Um, the main ones I use are automatic cameo, or I will choose a custom size where you can type in your size, say we have a four inch by four inch piece, and I would use this as my design um, space to get a visual of how much space I have if I have a four by four piece of vinyl that I'm gonna place on my design mat, on my cutting mat, then I can change my page size to that. Now, something to note about this is that when you do change your page size, let me go down here to choose, my camera that I was using in my blog post as an example. I'm going to fill my image with color. As I said, I like to have all my images or fonts colored and this designer didn't make it a compound path. So I'm gonna make it a compound path for design purposes real quick and resize that. And then if I place this here, what you would notice is this design is outside of my page size. Anything that's outside of this page size right here is not going to cut. If I keep my page size at my four by four, I have told the software that my material is only four inches by four inches. So it is gonna do exactly what you told it to do. It will not cut outside of that four inch space. So if I do have a material that I've put on here that is bigger than the four by four, before I send to cut, I need to change that back to either what my material size is or in this case I will select automatic cameo 
and then it will cut. But something to note is that if you have changed your page size, any design that is outside of that page size will not cut. That portion of your design will not cut. So the next part here is your cutting mat. So we're going to talk about that cutting mat. Down here, you can select the size of your cutting mat. So you have several options. You have none. If you have a portrait machine, you're going to choose the portrait. You have Cameo 12 by 12, Cameo 12 by 24, and then you get into a couple other of the machines, the Mint and the Curio, a couple different sizes. If you have a Cameo machine, the most likely you're going to be using is Cameo 12 by 12, 12 by 24, or the Nomad. So first, we're going to talk about the differences between having a mat and not having a mat. So right now I have this show cut border turned on for me and you can see that there's a red line around my grid that's showing me that's the very edge of where my machine will cut. So if I have my mat set at a 12 by 12, it's telling me that it will cut to the edge of that 12 by 12 grid. If I change my cutting mat to none, which you can cut without a mat if you are using a material such as vinyl or HTV, heat transfer vinyl, that is a material with a backing on it, then you can put your material in the machine without a mat. However, you do have to move your right roller over to grip the material, or if it's smaller than a 12 by 12 piece of material, you would have to move it to grab that material however small it is. You do notice here, I want to point out that on the left and the right side of your material, it now shows that my cut border is about a quarter inch inside of the edge of my material. You lose a quarter inch cuttable space on either side of your materials as this is where the rollers have to grip your material in. You will also notice that my cut border has now changed to the very top of my vinyl. And when you insert your vinyl and load it into your machine, it will start cutting right here at the very edge. So you need to allow for that when you're placing your design there. You will also notice that on the back end, your machine needs about a one inch allowance so it can hold that material in. So you lose about an inch of cuttable space on the back end of your material when you cut without a mat. Now I have heard many people say that they have tricked the machine to allow them to get their design further down on the material. And yes, you can try to trick the machine by increasing your page size an inch larger than what your material actually is. The one thing I will caution you about that, you can see here that your one inch clearance still stays the same. You still have the one inch, but your machine now thinks that you have an extra inch of material that you're feeding into it. And this allows the machine to securely grip your material in the machine. Does it work? Sometimes. I will caution you to say that if your design is down here close to the edge, your machine has very little space to keep that material in your machine. So it may twist and your design, your cut is going to be off. It may go out the back side because the machine doesn't have enough material to grip. Does it work sometimes? Probably. But just know that if you're trying to trick the machine, sometimes it can go wrong. So we're going to change our page size back here to the 12 inch and you'll see that design come back up. So I can place my design close to the edge of that border and it'll cut. The closer you get, if you get really close to that edge of that border, it may not cut completely. And you will know, you will learn that from personal experience as you get going what your machine can do and, and how far it will go in the cut process. So there is a little bit of a difference when you're using a mat versus no mat. I prefer to cut with a mat whenever possible. That's a personal preference. Everybody develops their own 
um, way of doing things and how they feel comfortable. I have cut without a mat. I've recently used the um, Silhouette Roll um, Feeder and it worked great. Um, you just have to make sure that your vinyl is feeding uh, carefully and that you've allowed this clearance here for your design and everything. So there are just a few differences that when you're using no mat versus a mat. So we're gonna change this back here to a mat. And then one thing that I do use a lot is this reveal. Um, I tend to design with my reveal completely at 100%. I like to see the grid area of my mat and then I can place my design on it and my material on it exactly lined up with my grid lines on my mat. So it's that's another personal preference on how you want to view things. You can change it so you can halfway see it. Um, you can just use the slider bar here. You can type in a new number and hit enter and it will change it. Or you can use these arrows up and down to change the how you want to view that. That's completely a personal preference on how you want to visually see that. The next thing that we have here is the rotate view. Something to note about this is that it is exactly what it says. It does nothing to your design. It does not rotate your design. It only rotates the view that you are seeing on the screen. So you'll notice here I have it set to zero degrees. When I change that to my 90 degree option, it then rotates my mat 90 degrees. The arrow on my mat has not changed. This is still the same direction that I am feeding my mat into my machine. And my object is still in the same place on my mat in the top left corner. So it is just a visual of your mat changing. So we will go here and select 180. Your mat is still gonna be fed in with the arrow pointing in. There's only two ways that your mat goes into your machine correctly. And that is the arrow facing into your machine or when your rollers make grooves and you can't feed it in or your adhesive loses sticky on this end, I will flip my mat around and you can put your, your mat in on the opposite with the arrow pointing out at you. Those are the only two ways that your mat can go in your machine and cut correctly. Will your mat feed in the other direction with this forward? Yes, it will, but the grid will not line up and you will not get a good print and cut because your grid line doesn't match up. So those are some things that I've seen along the way. So here I'll just change for the, the um, visual of it. You're still loading your mat in here with the arrow and your design is still up here in the left-hand screen. So what you would use this for is if you do have something that you're designing with a large mat, say you're 12 by 24 or even larger than that, you can change your mat size and it will then show across your screen. So you can design here a little better and get a better visual with it all being on your screen without having to be zoomed out so far. Now, if I change it back to the zero degrees, you can see how my mat changes and I will need to zoom out in order to see my full mat. So it just gives you a better view for designing. It doesn't change how your design is gonna cut on your mat or anything like that. It is just a view of your mat and your design. So we'll change this back here to a 12 by 12 mat and we'll zoom back into page size, fit to window. So two other things right here are your print and your cut borders. Your print border, if you check that on, you can see that this little gray line showed up and this is the border from where your current printer that's hooked up to your computer will print to. So if you're doing print and cuts, that's a good idea to have on and you can change the orientation. If you change your page size to letter, you can see I had um, the portrait orientation chosen for the last time earlier in the video, and it will now bring up that gray border around my letter size. So that is the edges of where my printer will print, and it gives you an idea for designing when you want something to print out. So I typically keep that unchecked. There's no reason for me to have a extra line showing up on my grid. The one I do keep checked 
most often is the show cut border. And you can see here that when I toggle it on and off, it puts a red line around the edge of my border. I have my preferences set so it will cut to the edge. And this is the edge of where your machine will cut. And it will cut almost right up to the very edge of that. So if you see here, I will change my size to a letter size. My page border, and this I will do this. My page border also changes to the very edge of my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So that is a good visual way to see where the edges of your cuts are. So here, I'm gonna change this back to my Cameo page size. I have mine set to, to cut to the very edge of my paper, or edge of my grid. You can change that here under the Preferences panel in the bottom right again, and click on Defaults. And then I have Cut to Edge of Page selected. Um, it defaults to have this unchecked, I believe, in most of the softwares, so we'll, I can show you how that works. So we're going to uncheck it, we're going to hit Apply, and then we're going to hit OK. Now you can see, and I'll zoom in here, that it has changed the area just a little bit on where it's going to cut to. So if I move my design close to it, I need to understand that the closer I get to it, then it's... It, I'm getting to the very edge of my cuttable space. Now, if I go back and change this in my preferences panel, my defaults, and check cut to edge, when I click on apply, you're going to see that change again. And I OK that. You're going to see that it now changes it to cut to the edge of my grid. So those are all of the features within the page setup panel tab one. If you have any questions, let me know. You can find me on my website at www.silhouettesecrets.com and my email is silhouettesecretsplus at gmail.com if you have questions. Have a great day. Thanks.